Hello students, very very good afternoon to all of you. Students, what we are studying, we have started our ninth course, uh, ninth class foundation course in complete English. The chapter we are discussing is natural resources. Natural resources. What we have completed in last lecture, we have completed greenhouse effect. The effect of greenhouse on our earth is global warming. Fine. So we have discussed global warming. Now, in greenhouse effect, we have discussed its introduction. What do you mean by greenhouse effect? What are the causes and harmful effects? Now, humans are actually responsible in creating this global warming because gases in the greenhouse or we can say the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are present in a average proportion that are actually essential for our atmosphere. But the unmanaged human activities are actually increasing this greenhouse gases, uh, gases to a tremendous level. That increasing in amount, that increasing in too much amount actually causing the global warming because these gases are trapping the long wave radiation, heat energy and increasing the temperature of globe that is earth day by day. That increasing temperature causing many problems to the living organisms because we the living organisms are depending on the non-living components also that maintains the balance of our ecology that is ecosystem. The abiotic component that is air, water, land on which we are dependent that's why we are making a balance. Fine. So can our measures prevent greenhouse? Definitely. The humans has to prevent, has to control its unmanaged activities in order to control this global warming. Fine. So prevention, that point is left actually. We have not completed in last lecture, going to complete in today's lecture. What measures should humans taken to prevent this global warming? Because already the greenhouse effect is continuously showing. But to prevent or to decrease its effect, some good measures should be taken. What are they? First cause of what, uh, whatever the cause of global warming, just make it opposite. Just correct them. If you are doing deforestation, the humans should do afforestation. What happen if humans do afforestation? Afforestation means growing of more and more trees. Growing of more and more trees. So, whatever the carbon dioxide releases from any kind of natural source, human source or by the biological activity like respiration, that CO2 get absorbed by the plants. The green plants, especially the green plants, utilizes this CO2, fix this CO2 and proceed the procedure of photosynthesis means the respiration and photosynthesis are opposite procedures. In respiration, we are breaking the food. In photosynthesis, we are preparing the food. Fine. In this way, we can control the amount of CO2. That is one of the essential greenhouse gas. Second, we can decrease the industrial emissions. Means we can more prone to ourselves to classical techniques, use natural techniques, uh, less use of like insecticide, pesticide, use manures and compost. Fine. So decreasing industrial emissions. Decrease the concentration of chlorofluorocarbons. Decrease the concentration of chlorofluorocarbons by decreasing the usage of air conditioners because refrigerators and air conditioners are the major source for emitting the chlorofluorocarbons. Now we are saying that it is not possible, uh, ma'am, it is not possible not to use air condition in refrigerators. These are the, uh, actually these become the basic necessity, uh, necessities of life. They should be in our home in a mandatory condition. So, to remove it, you will grow more and more trees. If more and more chlorofluorocarbons were released, they are get absorbed by trees. Um, your nature is blessed with producers. 
producers are actually god for us because green plants not only manufacturing food for others but they are able to absorb harmful gases to a great extent and cleaning the environment or maintaining the perfect composition of environment decrease the concentration of cfcs chlorofluorocarbon that completes the topic of greenhouse effect now what is the topic of interest now biogeochemical cycles biogeochemical cycles in biogeochemical cycles it is actually emphasizing the exchange of nutrients matter energy within this globe of atmosphere in between abiotic and biotic components because if you want uh, if you want to maintain a perfect balance in the ecosystem both the components should use each other very well as we very well know that when we discuss the non living abiotic components air water and soil mainly they are not going to use us but we can use them but the unwanted and managed activities of humans are actually deteriorating this ecosystem so within this ecosystem within this environment within this biosphere there is a interaction between biotic and abiotic components fine within this ecosystem fine there is a uh, lecture there is a chapter of ecosystem in your 12th standard when your students from 9th will enter into 12th standard you will came to know how important ecosystem is broader version of ecosystem chapter is available in 12 but we take some of the points also to prepare yourself yeah prepare you for nts examinations also so within this ecosystem it's two major components who are actually making the backbone core of this ecosystem it's two major components within this ecosystem it's two major components that is first is biotic first is biotic component and the another second one is abiotic component fine biotic components are actually indicating the living components that is the living organism v plants animals including human beings and smaller smaller microorganisms fine and in abiotic components we are dealing with non living components or factors that is non living conditions or factors non living condition these actually non living conditions are nothing but the factors fine these are uh, factors we can say climatic factors edific factors topographic factors fine so we can write factors are climatic edific last but not the least topographic fine climatic edific and topographic factors in climate we take wind water temperature in edific factors we take the soil factors soil factors like uh, soil characteristics soil property and topographic factors actually the physical uh, dealing with the physical structures like slopes mountains valley we are not going to see these things in deep but it is better to understand it fine 